When people passionately take opposing stances on topics, especially testable and observable topics, just expressing that they're right and other people are idiots, something's gone wrong somewhere. Somewhere there's been a breakdown in gathering ideas, comparing ideas, and or communication. It's probably as a result of a lack of understanding of how science operates. But let's not go through that, it sounds like a lot of work. You know, maybe the problem isn't a lack of understanding of how science operates, maybe the problem is that we always want a shortcut. Let's say you're presented with two buttons. The one on the right makes everybody think the things that you think, whether you're correct or not. The one on the left makes everybody, including yourself, believe the correct ideas. Believe things for the way they actually are. All your old ideas could have ended up being wrong, who knows. Which button would you push? Shut up, nobody can hear you. I'm pretty sure everybody would push the left button. This seems to be the ideal that we aim for, that we don't care about sides, we just want everybody to be correct. Although maybe we're only really on board with something like that on paper, because in the absence of a magical button... Humans are an odd contradiction of smart and dumb. On the dumb hand, we seem to suck at learning. We suck at remembering, perceiving, reasoning, and arguing. We suck so often and so predictably that we've been able to catalog the ways that we suck as cognitive biases and logical fallacies. You've probably heard of some of them. There's confirmation bias, the tendency to only look for, notice, and remember ideas that match what we sort of already thought. We're not out in the world judging every idea based on its rational plausibility or being thorough to make sure each idea we're holding is the correct one. Instead, we're only really interested in ideas that make us feel correct which ends up making it really difficult for us to change our minds. As a flaw in the way we argue, there is ad hominem arguments, like this person's an idiot, look at this other time they were wrong, or this person used to work for this specific company, so this idea that they've got is incorrect. Sometimes this does seem like a useful shortcut. If we can't trust the person, then how can we trust what they say or think? But ultimately, the validity of a claim isn't proved one way or the other by our perceptions of the person communicating it. Anyway, people have cataloged all sorts of these tendencies. I'm not going to go over them all because there's a lot, and they'd probably add three before we finished. But they do all sort of take root in the same general cognitive tendency or property, and they can all be summarized pretty simply. We are just idiots. Our ancestors only needed to be smart enough to make sure they were sexing the right species. That's basically what we're working with. The human brain thinks that knowing for sure is really easy, and then the face hole flaps about. So that's pretty dumb. By the way, I don't have these sorts of problems. You don't have to be a total genius to figure this stuff out, even though I am a genius. So don't worry about not being able to trust the things that I say. I've got all the best facts. Like did you know there's no such thing as long-necked dinosaurs? It's always just been short-necked dinosaurs dying next to snakes. The contradiction is, yes, humans buy lottery tickets, but we also build space stations. When we go slowly and carefully, we are fully capable of learning, and we demonstrate that ability with all the crazy stuff we do. But we have had to develop systems of steps and rules to allow us to learn properly like this. For example, with science, one of the rules that a lot of people have trouble with when starting out is that every idea or claim must link to a study that directly demonstrates that claim. So for example, you can't just say frogs are cold-blooded, assuming it's common knowledge, that it is known. It is known. It is known. No. The human brain believes things far too easily to rely on common knowledge as a source. You mean like the common knowledge that women's menstrual cycles synchronize with the moon? Or Twinkies have a nearly unlimited shelf life? With science, it has to be, here is the study that demonstrates what we're saying. Like, here are the guys who measured frogs' body temperature within a changing environment. And it has to be a primary source. A primary source is a study that demonstrates the claim. A secondary study is just somebody reporting on the primary study. It doesn't demonstrate the claim itself. Getting the idea from them is trusting that they've reported on the primary study honestly and accurately. At best, that's a game of broken telephone. The idea is basically being treated as common knowledge. That it's true because someone said it's true, not because we've found it demonstrated somewhere. There may be good reasons to not use a primary source and just go with an expert witness in a criminal trial or something, but not in science, where we're trying to build a really solid foundation of ideas. Anyway, everybody likes science. Science is just whatever our best systems are for discovering truth. We like truth. I think we all recognize the wisdom in having what Socrates is said to have claimed to have. That which I do not know, I do not think I know either which seems like a really low bar to set, but you don't see it a lot. Instead of trying to figure out what we and other people do and do not know, the natural human tendency seems to be to treat those with contrary positions like opponents. Let's look at the public debate on climate change as, a, as, as an example. One side of the debate consists of who we'll call the alarmists, people who think climate change requires doing something about because humans are releasing gases that are trapping heat on the planet like a blanket and increasing the acidity of water. This is leading to environmental changes that occur faster than the planet's organisms can adapt to it, resulting 
resulting in a harsher and more expensive world, such that prevention is worthwhile. On the other side is who we'll call the skeptics slash deniers. People who don't think anything needs to be done because of any combination of it's not happening, it's happening but it's not that bad or even good, and or it's happening but it's not caused by us. All in all, action is not required. And I hate them so they don't get their own summarizing animation. These names are basically what they like to call each other. They feel that they're right, and the other guys are wrong or lying. The deniers like to self-identify as skeptics. The alarmists don't like that, though, partly because the word skeptic doesn't quite capture the wrong and or lying thing that makes them easy to deal with, but also partly because, well, to quote Rene Descartes, the metaphorical father of skepticism, I did not imitate the skeptics who only doubt for doubting's sake and pretend to always be undecided. On the contrary, my whole intention was to arrive at certainty, and to dig away the drift and the sand until I reach the rock or the clay beneath. Alarmists feel that the deniers are not doing this, that they're bringing up the same old ideas of warming pauses and adjusted numbers, not so they can find the rock and clay beneath, but so they can disengage from the topic. Personally, regarding this nomenclature, I would argue... Who cares? Sometimes when a person holds wrong ideas, it's not because they're lying or they've weighed all the options and have decided the wrong ones are best because their brains are broken. They do so because those are the only ideas they've interacted with. Likewise, many people who hold correct ideas do so because those ideas are the only ones they've interacted with. Then we all just get locked in with confirmation bias. We sort of don't put a whole lot of extra work in because we just had triplets. We've only got two nipples. Life is busy. We're not special when we think we have right on our side. We all always feel that way. And especially for an issue like climate change, whatever position we take, we're in it together. Ostensibly, the goal is to have ourselves and our opposition be correct. We're not enemies. The debate isn't a fight with winners and losers or something. Haha, <laughs> I'm high roading ya, you bastards. While being right is the goal, being wrong is often the first step. Calling someone a denier, or alarmist, or shill, calling it propaganda, calling it bad science, junk science, they're ways of unnecessarily drawing lines in the sand, and saying someone is fundamentally wrong without demonstrating it to ourselves or other people. Yes, surely all these things exist. And yes, who is making or communicating a claim offers some context and insight into their motives. But I mean, even with something like the Heartland Institute, an entity whose credibility is so high, on their own website they're able to brag about their talent for asking if they can send the best available research. It's only the very best. And that a whopping 43% of politicians who read their documents consider the Heartland Institute to be a very, or somewhat, valuable source of information. I wonder which of those boxes had more ticks. But surely we have the confidence to demonstrate that they're wrong because they're wrong, and the courage to face the possibility of being wrong ourselves. If not for ourselves, then for the people watching. Writing them off automatically can just look like blind to devotion or confirmation bias. Holy crap, I take it back. Look how many Facebook fans they have. Anyway, in summary, everybody thinks they're right, but everybody's also just an asshole. Which is, which is my point, I guess. We learn a little and think we know it all. We don't change our minds very easily, and then we can't imagine how they believe their ideas. So we think they're wrong because of who they are. They're liars and retards or something. We separate the warmers from the deniers, the left from the right, the socialists from the capitalists. When in reality, ideas are either correct or incorrect for better or worse reasons. And that's about it. Myself, I'm excluded from all this. I am actually always right on account of my brilliance. Like, I bet you didn't know the Earth really is flat. I mean, just look at it. We did go to the moon, of course. It turned out the moon was flat too. Anyway, this video isn't going to solve any problems. Not a lot of facts here. And if calling people assholes made them somehow believe the correct ideas, I'm pretty sure we would be Star Trek or something by now. If we want to fix these problems, we have to make changes. Like the real solution to a push door that people keep pulling is not to call people stupid and feel superior. It's to change the handle. For example, when we want to learn stuff, but we recognize that humans are dumb, we do this whole science thing. We make a bunch of structures and rules so that idiots can go in and useful information can come out. While science still has some flaws, it works pretty well. By far the biggest information problems we're having in our society are coming from outside that system. For example, science is often publicly funded, which is fine, but politicians can end up having control over which areas get funded and how a scientist's work is communicated. Depending on the information, politicians are also going to have a stake in how the information is used. This is obviously a bad combination. For example, if a study discovered that the chemical a company was releasing has been making the straight frogs gay, and the gay frog's dead. We don't want politicians hiding that message or protecting that company for their own biases. Whether they don't understand the work, they've made promises to the company, or they've made promises to the public about jobs and the economy or whatnot, doesn't mean those ideas aren't true. But this is the way it's often set up. 
Let's keep this party going by looking at climate change as an example again. For example, in the United States, new politicians were elected in that do not believe global warming requires attention, so among other things, they're cutting funding to climate research. Ironically, they claimed this was a move against politicized science. The politicians have intervened to save the scientists from the biases of politicians. They didn't go like, okay, those guys are gone now, since the other guys were getting in the way. Let's use this opportunity and change the relationship between politicians and scientists. One where you're free to build the most accurate picture of the atmosphere and climate anyone ever has, and answer these questions once and for all. Demonstrate to the world how strong science can be. Nope, it's just you guys, no more money for you guys takes care of that. You NASA pricks, stop looking at the Earth. What do you think you're gonna learn? Take us back to the moon. Not because it's easy, but because maybe they've added a golf course or something since last time. If the public benefits, then there is an incentive for there to be public funding. But just because someone's in charge of the money, or higher up on some sort of human hierarchy, it doesn't mean that they're better at being right. How would they be able to see through the mist and the haze of uncertainty in a way that our most robust truth-seeking systems can't? To decide an entire branch of research just isn't true. It's one reason scientists use peer review and not boss review, and why the solutions to the flaws of peer review involves having more eyes going through it, having more discussion, having more open discussions. The solution to politicized science is less power to politicians over science. A top-down decision of what areas count as truth is not a solution. It's literally the problem. Anyway, so that justification was pretty unbelievable. So the other claim they like to use is that this was a move against politically correct science. The insinuation being that it's wrong science. Because if it was politically correct, and actually correct, then that's twice the correctness. They would just look like assholes. Basically, by associating the research that supports the idea that climate change requires action with the concept of political correctness, which pretty much everybody dislikes, it's a term that draws up images of weakness and uncritical follow the leader mentality. They can then present the tiny fraction of research, no matter how weak, that supports the idea that climate change does not require action, and write off any replies from the other side as biased, oppressive, and faggy without having to demonstrate that it's wrong. They don't even have to demonstrate that the phenomena exists, or that it doesn't apply to their own work. That's how much we hate the concept of political correctness. To most of us, the concept goes against the idea of free speech. We like free speech. The Heartland Institute has sent a copy of a book called Why Scientists Disagree About Global Warming to elementary and high school teachers in the United States. The book is a clever mix of logical fallacies, like trying to discredit anyone who doesn't take their stance and crediting those who do in a move so that they can rely on secondary sources, referencing what people say rather than what studies demonstrate. They don't even cite studies for important claims. They blatantly misapply statistics terms that they suspect the public won't understand take things out of context, they ignore and cherry pick observations, and mix it together with some genuine skeptical points on the issue to weave this story of politicized and politically correct science that basically has no basis in reality. And it has such nuggets of gold like, if CO2 and temperature are such problems for the ecosystems, then how did food output increase over the last few decades? Wow, but what a mystery! The danger, of course, is that if someone isn't looking for this stuff, and they haven't learned anything about climate change yet, these may be the most sophisticated ideas they interact with on the topic. While they're trying to get you to believe the story of how the system of science is flawed and corrupt, they didn't send a copy of this to all the scientists in the country, using their flawless arguments to gather allies and improve science for posterity. Nope, they just targeted school teachers. On top of just the difficulties of learning and communicating, we also have people trying to manipulate us. It wouldn't be so bad, but we're not taught how to deal with this stuff in school. At least not in Canada and the US here. We don't learn about logic, argument, debate, cognitive biases. We don't go through having to construct a case like a lawyer does. And we don't learn about the history and philosophy of idea systems like science. We don't learn any philosophy, really. Teaching science the way we do now is like teaching journalism by only having people read the news. We don't practice being wrong and learning what it takes to be right. We've sort of left ourselves defenseless. Huh. I guess I've gotten to the age where I blame society's problems on schools, without knowing the realities of being in or out of the classroom, or what it takes to make changes. But I'm probably only like this because the education system failed me. I know I'm not the first person to suggest this stuff. Ever take a class that touted critical thinking skills? I seem to remember almost all of mine doing that. We've always recognized that this is the most useful skill that we can have leaving school. It's just that it takes years and years of directly practicing it. Maybe more like physical education than learning biology facts. Like when we first learn what confirmation bias is, we haven't really learned to see it in ourselves. We only see and call it out in other people. 
because we're assholes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Please support me on Patreon. Here's an inspiring quote from Carl Sagan. We've arranged a global civilization in which the most crucial elements profoundly depend on science and technology. We've also arranged things so that nobody understands science and technology. If we don't practice these tough habits of thought, we can't hope to solve the truly serious problems that face us, and we risk becoming a nation of suckers, a world of suckers, up for grabs by the next charlatan who saunters along.